Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my Avengers Infinity Saga Marvel Rewatch video. There were all kinds of Marvel Phase 4 big Easter eggs setting up Avengers Endgame and the Marvel Phase 4 movies that we didn't spot the first time we saw the movie. So we'll break everything down. We're also doing the Infinity Saga box set giveaway for all the movies. I'll also be naming a winner during this video for the first box set. I've got two to give away. All you have to do to enter that is just be a subscriber and leave your favorite moment from the Avengers movie on the video. Careful for spoilers for all the Marvel movies so far, and I'll just number these as we go along just because there are so many Easter eggs. Starting at the beginning, the movie literally starts with the title sequence revealing itself inside the Tesseract, framing what the entire Infinity Saga of movies is going to be about, the Infinity Stones themselves. At the time, there were a lot of fan theories that the Space Stone was inside the Tesseract, but that wasn't confirmed by Marvel till years later, for those that remember the epic Thanos name theory of the stones. The voiceover during that scene might sound like an evil version of Benedict Cumberbatch doing a Doctor Strange voice, but the character is actually named the Other, he's Thanos' servant who also comes back to be killed by Ronan during Guardians of the Galaxy. He's played by Alexei Denisov from the Whedonverse. There are a lot of other Whedonverse alumni that appeared during the Avengers and other Marvel movies throughout the MCU. The character of the Other is the one who serves as the go-between for Loki and Thanos in Sanctuary where Loki seeks an alliance with him as a path to revenge on Earth. So when they bicker later in the movie and Loki shows up looking like he's half dead at the beginning of the film, it's the Other who tortured him into submission for Thanos. Thanos doesn't actually touch Loki himself for the first time until Avengers Infinity War when he touches him to kill him. And as you notice here, Thanos' rocket chair is also very different looking from the one we saw in Guardians. The actor who plays Thanos is also a very different person and his visual design is very different. The reason his character model looks so different is because they hadn't cast Josh Brolin to actually speak lines of dialogue as Thanos yet and this was a very early template for what Thanos would become. Damien Poitier is the person playing him here. He's actually talked about it later. He said it was a pretty cool experience for him, but they didn't bring him back to do more Thanos later. He just got to play Thanos on screen very briefly for this Avengers post credit scene. We get our first look at the scepter. They clearly imply that Loki knows there's an infinity stone inside it and that's where its power comes from. There were a lot of fan theories about the mind stone early on, but it wasn't until years later in Avengers Age of Ultron that they confirmed that. They show the Shatowry for the first time. We see Project Pegasus for the first time, which we later learn was originally created by Howard Stark in partnership with S.H.I.E.L.D. and Marvell of the Kree to study the Tesseract, trying to explore its potential for unlimited clean energy and faster than light travel. We also learn a lot of modern day tech like Iron Man's arc reactors were inspired by the Tesseract, the Space Stone, Infinity Stone Energy, and a lot of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s modern day tech like the cloaking shields for the helicarriers, the weaponry, is also based on Alien Kree and Skrull's tech from the 90s. You also have to keep in mind that Nick Fury's S.W.O.R.D. space station is also based on Marvel's original ship which was in orbit in the 90s cloaked from Earth's sensors. So a couple minutes later in the film when they blow the base up, Nick Fury isn't that upset because he's already busy building a giant space station in orbit right now. He has his backup site. We meet Black Widow and the new Mark Ruffalo Hulk for the first time. Everything from Incredible Hulk is still canon to the MCU even though it's a different actor. The reason why Edward Norton said he parted ways with Marvel before the Avengers movie was because he said that he wanted to do a darker version of the Hulk than Marvel had planned for the character. They had originally planned to do a solo Hulk trilogy with him. I discussed the plot of what that trilogy would have been during my Incredible Hulk Infinity Saga video, so I'll add a link for that in the description below. But the final scene of Edward Norton opening his eyes after meditating with the green eyes was meant to be a setup for the famous Hulk line, that's my secret, I'm always angry, in that now he can actually control when he becomes the Hulk. When he jokes about swallowing the Tesseract, that's exactly what Goose does back in the 90s, then throws it up like some kind of cosmic hairball at the end of the Captain Marvel movie. You also notice that outside too, all the agents waiting for the Hulk are holding those Phase 2 weapons powered by Tesseract energy. When Nick Fury meets the S.H.I.E.L.D. oversight committee, we see Gideon Malak for the first time, more Marvel Phase 2 setup. He was later revealed to be the head of Hydra's operations in America during Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They actually just introduced his grandfather on that show right before the events of the Captain America First Avenger movie. They reference Phase 2, now in the movie it's all about the weaponry that they're developing, but this is also Marvel's clever way of getting fans hyped up about the Marvel Phase 2 of movies in real life. When Nick Fury goes to recruit Captain America for the Avengers, he hands a file on the Tesseract. It mentions Mephisto by name and the Infinity Gems. 
Currently, we're all hoping to see Mephisto appear in one of the upcoming Marvel Phase 4 movies or Disney Plus series like Doctor Strange 2 or WandaVision. Later, Marvel would retcon some of this document and start calling the Infinity Gems the Infinity Stones and stop mentioning Mephisto, mostly I think because of rights issues with Fox, because at the time, they planned to do a more comic book accurate version of the Infinity Gauntlet saga storyline. Mephisto is just a big part of that with Thanos if you've never read the comic book. So originally it sounded like they had big plans for the Mephisto character in the Infinity Saga, but then had to change that later. We see the Stark Tower for the first time, which would later become the Avengers Tower, and while everyone is still wondering who bought the tower during Spider-Man Far From Home, a lot of people are hoping it's Norman Osborn and Oscorp for possible MCU Green Goblin, or even the new Fantastic Four's Baxter Building. When Marvel was making the first Avengers movie, they actually got approval to add the Oscorp building to the New York City skyline, so you would have seen Oscorp right here near the Avengers Tower, but the reason why it's not in the movie is because they didn't get the approval till after the visual effects were done for this scene, so they didn't have time to add it back in. Tony and Pepper's joke about 12% credit strangely gets used again during Guardians of the Galaxy's 12% of a planned joke. That's probably just a coincidence, though. But they talk about their relationship foreshadowing their eventual daughter wearing the Iron Man armor that he built for Pepper, implying her future in the armor as an adult and possible return in a future Disney Plus series. There was also a very big Avengers Endgame deleted scene, an alternate ending with Iron Man inside the soul world of the Soul Gem speaking to adult Morgan Stark played by Katherine Langford from 13 Reasons Why. <sighs> Coulson breaks in, they joke about Iron Man's life model decoy. Currently on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Coulson is actually a real life model decoy with the memories of the original Coulson who died, bringing this joke around full circle. They also reference Coulson's girlfriend, the cellist. They did her as a character on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She was played by another fellow Whedonverse alumni, Amy Acker. He shows Iron Man a bunch of footage from the other Marvel Phase 1 movies, including Incredible Hulk, Captain America, First Avenger, and Thor. Coulson also sets up the Wizard of Oz Captain America joke with him not getting any pop culture references because he was in the ice. Later during Winter Soldier, they actually show him writing down a list of pop culture stuff that he needs to catch up on. The reason why he understood the reference for Wizard of Oz, though, is because that movie came out in 1939, long before he became Captain America. Chris Evans also explained that by the time we get to Avengers Age of Ultron, Captain America is fully caught up on pop culture history thanks to the internet. Internet, so helpful. Iron Man makes his Thor Point Break joke, which they brought back in Thor Ragnarok. Point Break. Welcome, Point Break. The helicarrier design itself here in the bridge is actually meant to mimic the S.H.I.E.L.D. logo, and as cool as that is, later we learn that Hydra had so deeply penetrated all aspects of S.H.I.E.L.D. that had they not destroyed this helicarrier during the movie, Hydra probably would have remotely taken control of it during Winter Soldier, like they did with the other new helicarriers with Zola's algorithm. Speaking of Hail Hydra, Sitwell is sitting at the console near Captain America and Coulson. They have a big World War II callback when a survivor stands up to Loki, who demands that they kneel before him, and then later Thor tells Loki that the throne would ill suit him. They paid that joke off during Thor Ragnarok when it was revealed that Loki had let the Nine Realms fall into chaos while pretending to be Odin because he spent most of his time goofing off, creating plays about himself. Father? Oh shit. You also notice that Odin's ravens are flying around them during this scene too. They're not real ravens, they're more like advanced Asgardian magical creatures that do surveillance for Odin. They have that funny line from Captain America about God not dressing like Thor and Loki. There is an actual God in the Marvel Universe, he's called the One Above All, but who knows if we'll ever see him in an MCU project. They have their very iconic fight scene where we find out that Iron Man's newer Infinity Stone base arc reactor is actually boosted by Thor's magical lightning. Later, they brought this back around during Avengers Endgame when Iron Man planned ahead and built a special receptacle into his new nano armor to collect even more energy, giving him an even bigger boost. They answered the age-old question, what would happen if Thor's hammer hit Captain America's shield, creates a massive shockwave. They also brought this back during the exact same Endgame fight when Cap throws the hammer at his shield by himself, bouncing it off to hit Thanos with even more force. Iron Man starts wearing his Black Sabbath shirt as a reference to the I Am Iron Man song from the end of the first Iron Man movie. They introduced that funny Galaga Man scene, then brought him back five seconds later to pay the joke off. We get our first real big Hulk Iron Man scene setting up the Science Bros pairing and setting up a huge Avengers Endgame Infinity Gauntlet twist. 
when Iron Man tells Banner that maybe the Hulk, maybe he became the Hulk to save himself during the initial Gamma accident, as if the Hulk saved him, then they joke, I guess we'll find out if this was all for a reason, if he became the Hulk for a reason. Turns out that reason is because the Infinity Gauntlet gives off enormous amounts of Gamma energy, as he later says, it's kind of like I was made for this. Captain America finds all the Phase 2 weapon prototypes with Hydra logos on them. They're literally confiscated Red Skull weapons from World War II, so S.H.I.E.L.D. is not being subtle about this, and it's all in service of the eventual Winter Soldier Hail Hydra twist during Marvel Phase 2. Phase 2 weapons, Phase 2 Hydra takeover plot, also see what they did there. We get our Loki Black Widow scene where Loki basically tells us part of the plot of the Black Widow movie during Marvel Phase 4. That movie is set during the past, but he references all the red on her ledger, all the bodies she dropped when she was a Black Widow. When he calls her Drakov's daughter, Drakov is actually the Russian general in the Black Widow trailer who's leading the Red Room program. He's also the person who found Natasha as an orphan and brought her into the program. So even though he's not her biological father, like Red Skull reveals during Avengers Endgame, Drakov is her adoptive father. Her real father, we would learn, is actually named Ivan, and that's them doing a version of her comic book backstory, where she did have a biological family, but most of them died in a fire. She survived on the streets until she was taken in by another Soviet soldier and then given to the Red Room program when she was old enough. We have our first classic Iron Man Captain America standoff. This tension was only heightened by the presence of the Mind Stone. There was always this going on between the two of them, which would boil over during Civil War. Captain America also tells Iron Man that he's not the man to make the sacrifice play here, which sets up his sacrifice wielding the Nano Infinity Gauntlet in Avengers Endgame, dying in the process. When the Hulk talks about putting a bullet in his mouth and the Hulk spitting it out, that's a deleted scene from the Incredible Hulk movie. They took it out just because it was too dark, but it was also the same time we saw Captain America in the MCU setting him up because his movie came out right after the Incredible Hulk. When Banner finally hulks out, there's a funny message nearby on the bulkhead that says warning contents under pressure. He tries and fails to pick up Thor's hammer, something that they brought back during Avengers Age of Ultron when almost all the Avengers try to pick it up. The Russos also reveal that Captain America was always worthy, so it's him here pretending like he can't pick it up just to spare Thor the heart attack that he's having in the background watching this as his eyes go wide. Loki kills Coulson, but not after he gets him with a couple sick burns, and the Destroyer gun that was designed based on the schematics S.H.I.E.L.D. took from the Destroyer after the Thor movie. Right after this, Joss Whedon would bring Coulson back during Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. through Project Tahiti, which they explain was Nick Fury's backup plan for resurrecting dead Avengers should they ever truly die. But for those of you wondering about Black Widow coming back after Avengers Endgame, what about Project Tahiti? They explained that that was just a TV show thing. It's not something that they're going to do in the movies at any point. Most of you probably recognize Harry Dean Stanton from one of his many movies in his cameo scene here. When Iron Man faces off against Loki and dons the Mark VII armor, you notice in the background of this scene at the bar, there's a picture of him and Pepper that was taken during Iron Man 2 at the races. Iron Man quotes the Avengers comic book catchphrase, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. And even though they have their big Avengers Assemble moment and recite a bunch of comic book catchphrases, they wouldn't let anybody in any of the movies say Avengers Assemble until Captain America in Avengers Endgame. When Iron Man tells Loki there's no version of this where he comes out on top, Loki actually does wind up escaping on top of things with the Tesseract during Avengers Endgame. That's the Loki that will follow in present day during the events of the Loki Disney Plus series with the Time Variance Authority, who are kind of like the time cops of the MCU. As a lot of people suspected, the reason why Loki's Mind Stone doesn't work on Iron Man here is because his arc reactor is based on Infinity Stone technology counteracting the cosmic energy of the Mind Stone. We get our big Black Widow, Hawkeye, Budapest reference. That's also something we're going to see during Marvel Phase 4 in the Black Widow movie. This place at the beginning of the Black Widow trailer is literally Budapest where she comes to look for Yelena Belova. But we get a cameo scene from another Whedonverse alumni, Ashley Johnson. She also got a longer deleted scene earlier in the movie at her cafe near the Avengers Tower with Captain America, which also winds up being another Stan Lee cameo scene. Captain America is drawing the Avengers Tower. He was a sketch artist before he became Captain America, so even with all of his new powers, he still knows how to draw really well. Iron Man even has one of his sketches from World War II, the monkey that he draws here, sitting on his desk during Captain America Civil War. During their big Avengers Assemble moment, Cap recites Hulk's signature catchphrase, Hulk smash, setting him loose. Later, when he thrashes Loki, they actually brought that joke back during Thor Ragnarok and Avengers Endgame to show the aftermath of this scene where they all come for him. 
After Iron Man takes out the Shatari ship, he also lands right next to the shawarma place that gives him the idea for the post credit scene. You know, there's a shawarma place that I wanted to try out. When Iron Man takes the nuke through the portal to destroy Thanos' fleet, this is actually how Thanos learned who he was, then mentions him by name during their fight in Avengers Infinity War on Titan. There's also the same music cue when the portal is closing, making it seem like Iron Man is going to die and not make it back. They play that exact same music cue right before Iron Man snaps the Nano Infinity Gauntlet in Avengers Endgame, right when everyone thinks that all is lost. During this ending scene with all the big montages in the news broadcast, we get another Stanley cameo scene. He's playing chess in the park. It's actually the same place in the same park from X-Men The Last Stand where Magneto is playing chess. Originally, Kevin Feige actually tried to include a young version of Magneto in Captain America First Avenger. He was going to be one of the kids that were rounded up and put into Red Skull's camps, but Fox wouldn't approve the use of the character at the time. You notice the A113 reference up in the corner here too. That's a reference to the famous CalArts A113 classroom that the founders of Pixar always sneak into their movies. They reveal the plans for the new Avengers Tower, currently owned by new management. We'll probably find out exactly who during Spider-Man 3 next year. The logos for each of the Avengers are also meant to be their separate rooms, the labs, the facilities designed for each of their powers. The post credit scene is obviously the big Thanos reveal. The line to court death is a reference to the Infinity Gauntlet comic book storyline where Thanos is literally courting death romantically by snapping half of all life from the universe with the Infinity Gauntlet. The closest we've gotten to the physical embodiment of death in the MCU is actually the Hela character because she's the goddess of death, but she's not meant to be this version of death. Then the final post credit scene is the shawarma scene. The story behind this is also very funny too. They literally filmed this post credit scene the night before the movie premiered in theaters. Literally the night before. The reason why Chris Evans doesn't speak and just holds his hand up to his face is because he had to grow a beard for another movie and they covered his jawline with a really bad prosthetic. But if you spotted any other big Marvel Phase 4 Easter eggs or other big Avengers Endgame setup moments that I didn't mention during the video, just write them below in the comments. So congratulations to the giveaway winner for the first Infinity Saga box set, A. Baez. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone leave your requests for other Marvel bonus videos in the comments below too. So everyone click here for my new Spider-Man 3 video and click here for all my Marvel Infinity Saga rewatch Easter egg videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.